On this eatable episode of UTR, it's our first ever Detroit restaurant ketchup show. And no, it's not about that red stuff you put on your hamburger. It's about the fact that new and awesome eateries are opening up so fast in the Motor City, we can't keep up. So get ready to speed date some dinners and find out why Detroit is where you should be pleasing your palate. A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at stallsauto.com. The Michigan Economic Development Corporation is dedicated to enabling economic prosperity. The MEDC markets Michigan with the focus on growing businesses and building resilient communities in our state. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. You know, deciding where to go out to eat in Detroit used to be a pretty simple proposition. But now so many awesome places are opening up that just trying to decide is like, well... So here's how it's gonna work. We've picked five relatively new Detroit dining establishments and we're giving them each about three minutes or so to give you the who, what, when, where, why, and how good they are. Then the rest is between you and your fork. So get ready. Get hungry, and let's do some munching in Motown. But first, an exciting UTR geography lesson. Detroit is located in southeast lower, lower Michigan. You dig? Now, if you've seen this show before, you know that, well, I've been around the world, which means I've been to Naples, Italy, the birthplace of pizza, and had a real Neapolitan pizza. Well, guess what? I'm about to save you the price of a really expensive plane ticket. Because the pizza in this place is certified Bonafide and about to be tried by yours truly. Pizza Plex is a comfortable, casual little neighborhood cafe in southwest Detroit where you can get pizza that's actually been approved by the pizza power people back in the old country. This is also a place where the community comes to connect, share, learn, and love each other. But before we get to all that, let's spend some time with the guy who decided to make pizza making his X Men power, Nathan Hannon. So, for people that don't understand what a true Neapolitan pizza is, what is it? What is the designation? So, um, uh, Vera Pizza Napolitana is the designation that covers just the margarita and the marinara pizza. Yeah. Just those two. Those are the top two pizzas on our menu. But really, Vera Pizza Napolitana in English trans translates to true, authentic Neapolitan pizza. And that is really, we're following centuries old techniques in terms of how we make dough, how we handle dough how we, the ingredients of what we use and put on the pizza and then the order of operations in terms of like what we put on the pizza first and second and third and fourth and things like that. And then it's also how you touch it, like how you handle it, how you get it out to the sides and then like how you cook it in the oven, the temperature that you cook it in the oven at. Now are you the only certified Neapolitan pizza maker in Detroit? In Detroit, yep. yep. Really? Only yeah, only one. Uh, how many are there in Michigan? There's or? two. There's uh, Pizza E Vino in Plymouth right. and then there's us. So there's really only two true Neapolitan pizzas, right? The margarita and the... The marinara. The yeah. marinara, yeah. okay. So the marinara is uh, its one of the oldest pizzas on the planet, and probably the, the oldest pizza. And it's just the uh, Simizano tomato sauce, olive oil, basil, oregano, and garlic. And oh, it's yeah. the margarita came after the first queen of Italy, so it's told she went to Naples. Uh, Italy's a younger country than the United States. Um, but yeah, she went to... Naples and then had a uh, wanted to or get a pizza and one of the pizzioli who made her the pizza decided to put mozzarella on it and so it has the red of the Italian flag the white of the Italian flag and the green of the Italian flag ah. so, so the green basil the red tomato sauce olive oil and then the fresh mozzarella but again like we were saying this place is so much more than even though the pizza is awesome it's so much more than the pizza it's really it's all about community it's all about community yeah so um, we have, uh, so we're structuring to become worker owned, but then we also have some other ways that we try and give back uh, to our neighborhood, uh, some far more direct just by like putting food into people 
uh, and that's coming from the Suspeso sponsorship. Suspeso translates to suspended. And so here we, we try and do uh, Suspeso sponsorships where once a month or as often as we can, we kind of like crowd pool and crowd fund through our customer base of paying it forward. It's like a simple way for everyone to kind of like take part in that, in that you know, bringing food and bringing people together. Well, I have to say you're the most Italian Irishman I have ever met in my yeah, life. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I feel like I've hopefully earned the honorary uh, status of, of being Italian. If you're looking for a passionate, unpretentious place that gives back to the community, all while giving out incredible slices of Napoli-approved pizza, pop into Pizzaplex in Southwest Detroit. Both your conscience and your tummy will thank you for it. Well, right now we're going to hop, skip, and jump from Italy all the way over to Asia. Except truth is, I think we just need the hop and the skip, because the place we're going to is, well, it's kind of right next door. <laughs> that was easy. That's right, we're staying right here in southwest Detroit to enjoy some incredible creations from Southeast Asia. Flowers of Vietnam is the culinary brainchild of Chef George Azar. He's a homegrown southwest Detroiter who traveled the world, honed his craft, and then brought his experiences and his passion back to the neighborhood where he grew up. Why is this place being talked about by official food folks from far and wide? Well, hungry minds want to know, and minds starved. Now let me know if I got this right. You've worked in some of the best restaurants around the world. You've been honored by the James Beard Foundation. When Anthony Bourdain came to town, he picked you as his fixer. And to top it all off, You've been named, this restaurant's been named one of the best new restaurants in the world by Bon Appetit and by GQ. In the country. In the country. In the country. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm getting to is, dude, you're a rock star. I mean, did you ever think this would happen to you? Never. When did food find its way into your life, though? Is a passion. Man, I, I mean, I was the fat kid when I was growing up, so it's like, how could, <laughs> it's like, how could you, how could it not, you know, it's funny because I even tell like, um, like cooks that I'm trying to like mold that like, if you're ever like cooking something and you're stuck, yeah. like just ask the inner fat kid in you, what should you do? And you will definitely make, end up making that right decision. Well, with your rep, you could, you could literally go anywhere in the world and cook and be a chef and be successful, I think. Why, you're from this neighborhood? Yeah. So what brought you back home? Um, one is just, I'd go work and come back, go work, come back. I noticed that uh, like throughout the years of working in other countries or cities, and I'm like, I performed the best when I was comfortable. Um, you know, so that's why I uh, ultimately decided to like start a business in where I grew up. What made you gravitate to Vietnamese food? Uh, I, w Vietnamese food very much so isn't boring to eat when you're eating it. Um, right. And when I, when I realized when I went to Vietnam, I started asking like elders like about the cu like cuisine and like the foundations and, and whatnot. And they literally told me, they're like, hey, we don't want to be bored when we eat. So we want every flavor profile to the max, but in balance. Like we want salty, sweet, bitter, spicy, all at once. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that made sense because that's why I love it. It's because I'm not bored when I eat it. Like I, you know. Well, for people that aren't familiar with the flavor profiles, mm -hmm. how would you describe Vietnamese food? What's the unique thing about Vietnam? Party in your mouth. <laughs> that says it all. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know how else to, I, I don't even know why I said that, but it's like, it's But it's funny. true. It is, really is though. It's like, you're, you will, you will always be, there's a lot going on in everybody. When I came here with my daughter and her boyfriend, we sat, my wife and I sat down and every dish we tried, we tried a lot of them, we, we were laughing afterwards. It's just <laughs> like, this is so That's probably awesome. honestly the best compliment I've had in a long time because we don't sell anything really tangible, but like, but like a feeling, like a golden sensation. Like, yeah. so when you laugh after, that's like, that's exactly the best compliment I could ever have. Oh, I'm glad I could help. Do no, my, do my small head. part. Get that on the head. <laughs> this is one of those places where you feel cooler just by being here. And the food is so good, you'll look even cooler consuming it. So if you want your next meal to be an experience that's fraught with flavor, pull up a chair at Flowers of Vietnam. I guarantee you'll be talking about this meal until you have it again. 
Well, since our taste buds are still tingling, why don't we keep our flavor flag flying and hop the jet stream and head down to the Caribbean? <laughs> Except I have absolutely no idea how the jet stream works, so why don't we just head over to the east side? We're here on the east side because that's where Norma G's resides. And if you're a fan of Caribbean cuisine, get ready for an awesome experience because Lester Gavaya would have it no other way. He's put together a place that's comfortable, casual, sophisticated, and full of the flavors of home. His home, that is. Okay, Lester, first question, very important. Yes. Is it Caribbean or Caribbean? Your choice, because really, it, it goes either way. I've heard people say it both ways. We say Caribbean, but other people, when they're trying to be proper, they say Caribbean, but it's Caribbean. I actually say Caribbean. Yeah, <laughs> so take it easy. With you. <laughs> and you really are from Trinidad. Yes, born in Trinidad. Wow. And I actually looked at a map, don't tell anybody, but that's <laughs> far away. <laughs> it's seven miles off the coast of Venezuela. Yeah. Yeah, so it's the last island as you come down. So really. you so you grew up eating real Caribbean cuisine. Yeah, I mean, what I'm serving in my restaurant is what my mother cooked, is what we ate for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. I mean, it's all the meals we ate every day is what I cook. And she was Norma G. She was Norma. <clears throat> my yeah. mom was Norma D. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good ladies. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. She cooked Southern, but. Oh, uh, okay, well, that's not. Uh, we ate a lot of okra. <laughs> anyway. We eat a lot of okra too. <laughs> um, so, if for people who aren't familiar with Caribbean cuisine, how do you how do you would describe it? Caribbean food is a is a is a blend of so many different cultures: Portuguese, Chinese, English, Spanish, French. Because all those countries, at some point in time, had control of one or two islands or many islands because they they, they influenced it by actually their explorers coming down and being part of that, and then influencing the natives that are there. So really it's a, it's a I, I want to say, where does the hodgepodge? It's just a, a, a true blend of different ethnicities, and Indian particularly has a very strong influence because of the curry. Yeah, because a lot of people say, oh, I've had I've had a Caribbean food, it's uh, it's jerk chicken, right? That's, yes. Well, yes, yeah. but it's so much it's more. It's so much more, they label it, and they don't realize, you know, what, what a Guyanese person might eat, what someone in Barbados, a Bayesian would eat, from someone from Trinidad, from someone in Jamaica, you know, St. Lucia. Very similar in many ways in that we have similar root vegetables, similar types of recipes, but there's always a different flavor based on what that island's heritage is, or how many influences they had. So it, it's similarities, but differences. And I, I keep telling people, I don't want this to be a Trinidad restaurant. What I want is this to be as a Caribbean restaurant, which means I'm gonna cook different things. So not everything will be from Trinidad, but at the same time, it's the flavoring and it's my style. You, sir, you get it. I, mean, I hope really, so. You really get it, because that's so much a part of it. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, I hope so. <clears throat> is your mom still with us? No, she's been gone a long, long time. She actually died the first year I came to Detroit, which was in 95. So um, she's never really had a chance to see this in a physical sense. Yeah. But I know she's here because a couple of glasses are broken when I do something wrong. So I have a feeling I know it's her kind of walking around going, OK, you messed up. <laughs> I, I bet she's proud. I, I hope she is. I miss her a lot and I wish she was here to share that with me. But see, this is really her, this is her legacy and this is really something I think I owed her. This is paying homage to her because of the kind of lady she was. And she was a great mother. Well, I know this is no consolation, but <clears throat> we're here to share it with you I tonight. I appreciate <laughs> that, thank you so much, Dr. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. The food here is simply fantastic and it'll warm your heart and soul as if you just returned from the tropics. So next time you're in Detroit, rolling down Jefferson Avenue, roll right into Norma G's for a Caribbean encounter of a tasty kind. Now, if you're an enlightened food enthusiast like me, you know that sweet potatoes are a genuine superfood. So I thought I'd take you to a place where they turn sweet potatoes into an actual sensation. I'm of course talking about sweet potato sensations on Lasser Road, just north of Grand River Avenue. A place where they slice, stew, steam, saute, and serve up both sweet and savory selections of this versatile vegetable. They may not be that new, but new people are discovering them all the time because of the countless creative ways they prepare this popular pinkish potato. Over the years, Espy and her mom, Cassandra Thomas, have put blood, sweat, tears, and a whole lot of love into this family-owned business. 
and all you have to do is take one bite to know it was all worth it. I just gotta ask you one question. Why sweet potatoes? Well, the reason why sweet <laughs> potatoes is because when my husband and I were first married and Thanksgiving rolled around and I didn't make candid sweet potatoes for Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. And he was very upset. He says, always. my mama always had candied yams. I don't understand why you didn't make any. So I said, oh, honey, you know what? I'm going to make you some sweet potato cookies. And I just said it as a bluff just to get him to quit bugging me about these mm -hmm. candy yams. So I came up with a recipe for sweet potato cookies. We started making it for family and friends. I would make these cookies and people would say, oh, these are really good. So we set up a table at a garage sale in our community. That's a gateway activity, you know. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it was a big 30 block sale in South Rosedale Park here in Detroit. And I had a table that said, move over Mrs. Fields. Here comes Mrs. T's sweet potato cookies. So in less than three hours, all those bags of cookies were gone. Mm -hmm. People were coming from blocks over because they had seen people eating them, talking about them, and they wanted to buy them. They were all gone. So my husband says, hmm, we might have something here, wifey. Mm -hmm. So he went to sleep. We went to sleep that night. He woke up. He says, I got the name. He came up with the name, Sweet Potato Sensations, the greatest taste in the nation. And in actuality, it was a better name because we wanted to do everything we could possibly think of out of a sweet potato, continuing the legacy that Dr. George Washington Carver started. Most people are familiar with his work with the peanut, but he did a lot with sweet potatoes as well. Well, you guys have tons of, how many things do you guys make with sweet potatoes? A whole lot. I should probably count it because I don't even know if I've counted it, but <laughs> pies, cookies, cheesecake, cake, ice cream, cobbler, candy yams, muffins, cupcakes, cornbread, waffles, pancakes, grits. Did you rehearse that? Pound cake. <laughs> Pound cake. Yeah, I say it all the time. And a lot of savory stuff too. Yep, the chicken and waffles, we do uh, salmon croquettes, turkey sausage, sweet potato pancakes, sweet potato waffles, grits, regular grits, cheese grits, sweet potato grits, black eyed pea collard green soup, one vegan and one smoked turkey. So we're like the sweet potato lovers, heaven on earth, pumpkin's cousin with an attitude. Yeah. Revolutionizing the way the world tastes sweet potatoes. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> because traditionally, people only think of sweet potato at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. So we were determined to change the mindset of the she public. She was hella determined. Like, <laughs> you can have sweet potatoes all year she round. She that you forever, for 30 years. To, you don't have to wait until Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and Christmas. Well, well, what's the most rewarding thing for, I mean, you guys are, this is a great example for the community, for kids to see a successful family business like this. Uh, but you guys work hard, don't you? Yeah, oh, yeah, very hard. <laughs> yeah, especially now. I mean, with everything that's going on in the world, um, our staff is completely scaled all the way back. It's me, my mother, and my sister. We have Toya, one of our cooks here. We have a baker. And I've just recently hired a couple front of the house staff as well to help. But for a long time, it was just three of us and our cook, Toya, working just to keep everybody safe. And just because we didn't want a whole lot of people in our you know, you know, all at one time. But it's we do a lot of hard work. We peel every single potato by hand. Nothing is coming out of a container or box and throwing it to the oven. It is, we sit there and we wash and we put them in the oven and we peel. It's a labor of complete love that goes into this product. We're scratch bakers. I'm telling you, nothing can get you through life better than family, community, and a taste tempting treat prepared by people who love both you and love what they do. If you're looking for a new happy place for your palate, I've got three words for you. Sweet potato sensations. Oh yeah. Now if you love energy, creativity, and diversity, and you're ready for an eating adventure of Eastern origins, <laughs> have I got a place for you. That's right. Just south of Detroit's historic and bustling Eastern Market on Gratiot Avenue sits a new gastronomic gateway to regional Chinese cuisine. Bunny Bunny is the collective brain baby of Jennifer Jackson and Justin Tutla, two motivated and dedicated young chefs who love what they do, love where they are, as well as the formidable flavor profiles of this fascinating culture. Want to know more? <laughs> Me too. My first question for you is the most important. Why did you agree to do this show? Uh, well, 
we lost a bet. <laughs> no, 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 really what I want to ask you is, where did the name come from, Bunny Bunny? I love it, I'll never forget it. Yes. You wanna play the game? <laughs> well, you can, you can tell the story. Well, you tell the story, it's your cabin. Okay, so we, our family had a, a very old cabin up in uh, Traverse City area in Beulah, and it was just a meeting place uh, for all of us, all the kids and the stepkids over the summer. And it was just a campfire game that we played um, around the fire. And it's it's a silly game that has, it, it involves lots of hand gestures. Uh, we just, we love the name. We love the idea about how kind of silly it was. And it also is tying into a project that we're doing later that's gonna be named uh, after the cabin. So the two kind of make sense. We're kind of tying it all into to the cabin and to Beulah and to how, you know, Jen fell in love with Michigan around the campfire playing the game, so. Now, I've never cooked authentic Chinese, but is it tough using a wok and cooking? Yeah. Um, yeah, our elbows aren't the same, but. No, uh. <laughs> and I think like learning how to use a wok and not wanting to use a saute pan is, because it's kind of the same, like, um, flow but you're it's not because you're like basically over a jet engine <laughs> yeah yeah it's, <laughs> Which it's you'll su see later. super hot and super fast so you have to be extremely prepared when a ticket comes in because those dishes take about 30 seconds to a minute to execute but you have to have all your mise en place right there get it in the pan or get in the walk and then get it out to the guests so it's 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 a very fast moving uh fast moving service Young, talented people like you, you've, and you've already cooked around the country. You guys could go anywhere. Why Detroit and why East, why this area? Yeah. Well, you're, you grew up in Bloomfield. Yeah. Um, he says to me at least once a week, he can't believe that he's back here, especially. Driving up and down Telegraph yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, what we're doing here, we, we probably couldn't do in any, any city. Um, there, there's, it, you, Detroit's still a place where there's still opportunity. Yeah, a ton of opportunity, and you can really, you can you write your own story in this city. And we love living in Eastern Market, by Eastern Market, working in Eastern Market, and really being a part of the community, and, and hopefully being a force to change um, in this small area. And yeah, Detroit's like no other city. We love it. Yeah. I mean, you guys do regional Chinese food. What regions, and because I don't know anything about sure. the regions. Yeah. <laughs> the idea of Chinese food, uh, we have a very specific idea when you say the word Chinese food, just like when you say the word American food to, to someone not from America. And, you know, they'll have images of hot dogs and hamburgers, just like when you say Chinese food, they had images of egg rolls and general shells. But in reality, like the United States, there's such a diverse culture there. The, the Northeast and the South and, and the West uh, all have their own food identities, and China is the exact same. And um, the way Chinese food has evolved to the American palate over the last hundred years really doesn't represent the kind of food that you'll get when you go to China. So um, it's really textbook cooking. We're not putting any chefy spins on anything. anything. There's no microgreens. Um, we're really just trying to be students and cook the food um, that you would you would find in those various regions of China. So well, that's another thing I love about your story is you guys are. It's not like we're there, it's like a journey and you're learning as you go and it's like discovery and adventure and that's what I love about your story. Yeah. Um, and the fact that this food is my comfort food, oh my God, it's just because it's such a beautiful culture and the flavor profiles and the spices, I mean, people that don't eat it, you don't know what you're missing, it's, it's amazing. So yeah. since it is my comfort food, would you mind actually making some of it for me? We'd love to. <laughs> She'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Bunny Bunny is just two more reasons why being adventurous with food is so much fun. And having up and coming creative chefs like Jennifer and Justin helping to change the culinary landscape in Detroit is the coolest part. So if you're a fanatical food finder like we are in UTR, find your next 100 favorite places to eat right here in Motown. Ah, sure, your brain might explode trying to figure out where you're going to go eat, but since mine did, I've been a lot happier. Hey, who are you guys anyway? And you want to go get something to eat? 
A visit to the Stalls Auto Collection will take you back to a time when cars were more than just a way to get around. A fantastic assortment of gas pumps, neon signs, and automated music machines dating back 150 years that must be seen and heard. Info at stallsauto.com. The Michigan Economic Development Corporation is dedicated to enabling economic prosperity. The MEDC markets Michigan with the focus on growing businesses and building resilient communities in our state. 